live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor Hortonworks, and by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley. Live at from the San Jose Summit Convention. 2015. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined by my co-host, George Gilbert, Wikibon.com's new big data analyst, uh, and our next two guests, Todd Lawrence, Director of Global Partner Sales at Cloudera, and Michael Crutcher, Director of Product Management at Cloudera Storage. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, so Cloudera, obviously, you know, <coughs> you know the history. The Cube started at Cloudera, was in the office, 17 people back in the day. Grew now, Cloudera is massively worth billions of dollars. Um, new VP of Engineering, I saw the news, congratulations. Go on the next level. You. you guys are kicking some butt. It's great to see. Not yet public, but we speculate. Um, so, what's going on at Cloudera? <laughs> Let's talk about some of the things going on at Cloudera, what's happening. What's the market telling you guys? Share some insight. Certainly. So first of all, thank you all very much for the opportunity. We're, of course, happy to be here and talk to our friends at theCUBE. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. You'll see the market continue to go the way that we've been sharing that it's been going for the last two years or so, right? Two years ago, we were having a very different conversation with customers, right? It was all about what I used to call the Hadoop Zoo, right? how many committers you have on this project, whose version number of that project is more advanced, things like that. And as a result of where our customers have led us over the last two years, the conversation is now about a very different you know, set of needs. It's about business needs, and it's about enterprise capabilities. And so, now what we're hearing from customers is, how can you solve our, our business problems? And how can you ensure that Hadoop, as we're using it, not on sandboxes out in the periphery of our engineering infrastructure, but actually in the center of the data center connected to all of our other enterprise grade systems, how can we be sure that our Hadoop cluster shares the same enterprise grade capabilities as our data warehouse, as our ETL servers, as all of the other things that have been driving our business for a decade or more. Hey, we saw each other at EMC World, one of your partners. You guys have a great partnership under your leadership and great seeing you at all the <coughs> events. EMC's got a whole new vision now with their you know, core technology division under Guy Woodward and then you've got CJ Desai who's run the emerging team. Um, it's interesting, they put Isilon in there. It's kind of like the, the anchor, the Macy's of the emerging. It's not emerging, but it's been around. And then Extreme IO's in the other group. So, which is emerging, but it's going to be yeah. a seller. It's going to sell like hotcakes based on the pipeline. So storage is hot. Storage is a big part of Impala, all the stuff going on around data. What's the relationship with EMC and how does that relate to what's going on here? So, so let me comment about the business yeah. relationship yeah. and then yeah. you can comment on the storage. Yeah. Sure. So as you know, we announced a jointly supported solution, Cloudera on Isilon last October, right? So we've been working and working very deeply with the engineering team over at EMC Isilon for the better part of a year. In fact, it's kind of funny, nobody believes this, right? But I've been told multiple times that we have a tighter relationship at the engineering level than other companies that also have solutions certified on top of Isilon, right? So we have weekly engineering meetings. Yeah. We collaborate at a roadmap level. Uh, we collaborate at, a, at an Apache HDFS level, because as you know, 1FS has supported the HDFS protocol for a long time. So our partnership with EMC is super, super strong. Today it's centered around the Hadoop solution on top of Isilon and turning your Isilon data lake into an enterprise data hub with Cloudera. But I think you'll see some very exciting developments emerge within the ETD family of solutions. You mentioned CJ Desai, of course he runs, yeah. runs ETD. You'll see some very interesting developments uh, within the ETD family related to Hadoop over the coming months. Um, we're excited to be working well, with Well, it's them. interesting, Sujay Patel, who is the uh, founder, amazing, I mean, he's no longer there, but like, the, when I interviewed him years ago, back in 2010 when theCUBE started, when EMC acquired Isilon, 
they were running all the big data for Facebook and all the big, I mean, they were big data. They weren't, and then when Green Home got acquired by EMC, I mean, that was their big data. So it seemed like a mismatch then, but now we're coming back to Isilon. It's the, it's the solid stable in the emerging foundation. It's not like an emerging technology. It's powering some big ass data in a lot of big web scale companies. So, uh, just one more <laughs> comment, and then I want to make sure Michael has a chance to comment as well, but the value proposition to EMC Isilon customers for Hadoop is actually significantly different from the market as a whole, right? So, Isilon's got 6,000 plus customers today using Isilon. They're not looking at Hadoop as this new cheap and deep storage solution, right? Those customers have already chosen their scale out storage platform, it's called Isilon, yeah. right? So they've been investing in the concept of a data lake since before we all use the term. Yeah, totally, yeah. But what those customers are excited about, and, and this is validated by all of our early joint customers as well, they've got, you know, in some cases, multiple petabytes of data sitting in their Isilon cluster. They listen to what this whole Hadoop ecosystem is doing at the analytics and at the processing level, and they're thinking, you know what, I want to get more value out of the data that I've already got in my data lake, and so that's what drives their interest in Hadoop. It's really all about bringing the analytics to the data where it lives today in Isilon. Does it also simplify the management relative to you know, just locally attached storage, JBOD stuff? I'm going to give Michael a chance to come Mike, in. All right, jump in, come on, get a word in. <laughs> Yes, yeah, certainly on that. There are management capabilities both on the Isilon side and through Cloudera Manager, which has very extensive kind of storage management capabilities. But um, kind of going back to what Todd was saying, I think it basically comes down to customers are looking for capabilities and not necessarily just a particular label that's slapped on something. And we've got customers that already have these very large install bases that are sitting on Isilon. Uh, they require certain capabilities, but they also want to run analytics and a lot of the other stuff that come with the Hadoop ecosystem and the applications that we support. So bringing those applications there uh, solves customer business problems. And at the end of the day, that, that's what we're about, is providing capabilities to customers. What about Flash? What's going on with Flash? And how does that relate to Cloudera? Because certainly, you know, all Flash arrays is looking at it's going to be a sell like hotcake, certainly on the extreme IO side. So what, how does that factor into some of the software innovations going on in the big data the yeah. Hadoop ecosystem? Uh, well, my, my background's in engineering. I think if you ask any engineer, like he'll say, it depends. Because <laughs> that's the honest <laughs> that's answer, good right? Answer. And uh, it, it really does depend on, on the characteristics of the application that you're looking to provide. And so for some Hadoop uh, ecosystem products like HBase, uh, Flash is very important because you really need that sub-second, very, very low latency applications. And for that, Flash is orders of magnitude better than disk. So certainly we, we see it being It's a workload there. specific issue, right? Yeah, I, I, th I think that, you know, it, it's still for, there are certain applications where flash is the right answer and certain applications where spinning disk is the right answer. And if we look back like 24 months ago or 18 months ago, we may have seen a different shading in terms of how much was appropriate for spinning disk and how much was appropriate for flash. We might be, see some of that tipping a little bit towards flash in terms of a uh, cost per throughput and cost per IOPS. Uh, so I, I think the landscape is changing, we're seeing Flash is part of a default configuration more and more often. We're seeing that more available in the data center. So I, I, I certainly think it's getting real and if, customers are really deploying it. If Flash gets more you know, cost effective per, per IAPS and you, know, you can get closer to memory speed but you know, storage capacity, sort of combine the best of both, does that change the type of workloads HBase can handle? Uh, it, it changes, or I, I think. It, does HBase have to change uh, I don't think HBase has to change. It can take advantage of that, that PCIe flash or just SSDs right now. Um, I don't think it fundamentally changes what you deploy it to do, but it comes better at the things it's already good at. Okay. So it, it's kind of just like ramping up the, the things that those kind of applications are already good at. So what's the big challenge around mainstream? I got Merv Adrian was just on theCUBE earlier, talking about this whole ecosystem is now going mainstream. Yeah, you know, obviously you're talking about the trough of disillusionment, but then that kicks up into value, right? So you start to see certainly the conversation change. Um, you know, the old, before the early adopters, Cloudera was scale out commodity hardware. Yeah. Certainly on storage, awesome. Amr and I would have conversation, Amr Awadala would have, I'd have a conversation how great that is, just like Yahoo, just like Facebook. But now at EMC, we're into this now, 
intersection of mainstream. You got people running stuff with Isilon. It's nothing to do with religion around open source commodity anything. It's just that's where their businesses run on, right? So you got big iron systems that are legacy and software management systems. What's the critical thing that you, that's happening in the market for customers? I mean, what's the around because storage in particular there seems to be a lot of activity, right? Because this is it scale, is it latency? I mean, what is the what are some of the top conversations that you're involved in there? Uh, this, this sounds like a business question, Todd. <laughs> so I, I wanted to be polite, but I will tell you that um, you mentioned the religious war kind of perspective here, yeah. right? There still is a lot of that, right? There are yeah. still people in the Hadoop world that think, oh, you know what? Hadoop is based on something that Google designed for you know, commodity hardware, yeah. and that's that's what it's. And Amazon be. builds their own machines. God bless America. What right. who cares, right? Exactly. Yeah. But but again, that's a religious argument, right? If you look at the commerce argument here, it's about for for these alternative storage platforms that now Hadoop is moving and supporting and running on top of. You know, the economics for a customer who's already made that investment are very different, right? So you look at a customer who's again got, let's say, petabytes of data in in Isilon. The marginal cost for them of making that data accessible to Hadoop is not about rebuying commodity hardware. It's frankly about just finding, redeploying, or potentially investing in more compute to be able to add the compute capacity that you need to match whatever workloads you're trying to run on your petabytes of data in Isilon, right? So the marginal economics of making more data accessible to Hadoop are very different when we're talking about now that data living in Iceland, right? But one of the other things, I'm sure you've heard this before, but the early customers that are moving in that direction all tell us that for them, they value the ability to manage their storage and their compute independently, right? Data growth, there was a customer that spoke after me at EMC's booth at uh, Hadoop World. I'm sorry, at uh, EMC World. And you know, this customer said, look, we're living this. Our data grows 100% a year, right? Our compute requirements are not growing that fast by any stretch of the imagination. So they're expanding their Isilon footprint fairly significantly, right? They're managing their compute with a virtualization layer in a much more efficient manner. Yeah, so, it's cleaner. And then you move the commuter on compute, it's great, it's getting yeah, cheaper too. Absolutely. Storage so, is <laughs> You know, it would be interesting to hear um, sort of the solution selling that Cloudera is doing right now because we heard a message from um, Hortonworks that was somewhat different, like along the lines of electricity, as in, you know, pervasive and we're going to have, you know, essentially appliances that consume that, appliances, the analogy being applications, you know, pervasive and, and everywhere, but um, in terms of getting an economic buyer to write a check right now, you know, where the infrastructure is not um, ubiquitous and it's not, um, it, it, it still has rough edges. What are, the, what are the ones that are, you know, sticking right now? So I'm not sure I caught your okay. to compare and contrast with the Hortonworks, but I love that question, so just flesh it out a little okay. bit more and I'll do this. The, 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 the Hortonworks one is, someday it's going to be ubiquitous, the infrastructure's going to be ubiquitous and we'll have all sorts of apps that plug into it. Um, but we're not there yet. And so the question is, um, you know, with the Gartner pipe cycle or Jeffrey Moore's crossing the chasm, what are the what are the applications that are getting the customers to write checks now? So, um, another way people have been talking about the recent Gartner report is you know Hadoop's dead and things. Like, yeah, but that but, was it was. No, I know. So let yeah. let me just say that's not been our experience. I, I, obviously not, right? But you guys went to EMC World. Did you see Mike Olson and Doug Cutting's keynote there at EMC World? Yeah, and they, Mike came on the queue with a tie on. <laughs> we don't see seen. that very often. We I know, had oh, we had on, pictures. Yeah. We had to prove so, it, we had to put it in the archive. So look, Mike, the Mike facilitated done, a whole panel of customers, right? Yeah. And these customers, in their own words, one from financial services, one from telco, and one from healthcare, described how, using Cloudera, they're getting 
tremendous business value today in production out of Hadoop, right? So there is no disillusionment. But right? that wasn't the source of the question. The source was more, he said early adopters, mainstream. Right. He's talking mainstream, not like, so much so hardcore early adopters. So, okay, yeah. so, so then carrying that thought forward. Yeah. Um, again, along with that, that transition from the Hadoop Zoo to talking about enterprise grade Hadoop. Yes. What else we are seeing, and, and by the way, this is, this is very much a difference, right? You know, other players in the Hadoop space um, will still emphasize things like, you know, that, well, out of the zoo, right? You know, they'll talk about yarn. Look, we supported yarn for many years. We agree yarn's a good thing. That's not what our customers tell us they want to hear about. They want to hear about this transition, I would say, from an early adopter to what I would call maybe a fast follower, right? And okay. in the fast follower, you're seeing we, we're already organizing ourselves this way, right? We're, we're moving quickly into this realm, let's call it solutions, right? Yeah. The horizontal IT driven use cases, they're still very important for those companies that are starting their journey. But more and more companies are moving to their second, third, fourth use cases. Those are all going to be more vertically driven, meaning more industry driven, right? So yeah. let's take well, the Well, domain expertise is really critical in there. Absolutely, right? Not quite to the level of an application, yeah. So here's how I define it, right? But this a is solution good. is yeah. maybe 70% repeatability, okay. right? With 30% configuration around the end. So what you're doing, let's say fraud detection in, in, in the banking industry, right? So we've solved fraud detection as a use case at multiple, and meaning many, many financial institutions, right? So now we have a solution, which is a collection of, of assets, some project oriented, some code oriented, you know, some intellectual know-how that we can bundle into a solution and do 60, 70%, have 60, 70% of the work done when we walk in, knowing that we're still going to have to tailor it or configure it for that remaining bit of functionality that's unique to that next financial institution that wants to tackle fraud. Someday we'll be to an application level, which is 90% packaged, and then there's a little bit at the end. But I think this transition to solutions, and don't make it 90, make it 60, 70% repeatable, that's happening right now. I would agree, and the linguistics of how customers talk is different. It's, it's outcome driven, right? It's a, I hate that yeah. word too, it's getting overplayed, but you know, business value, another overplayed word. But this is what people are talking about. This like, hey, you know, I don't care about this, I want, I have a problem, I need technology, I need an integrator, I need someone to deploy it, deliver it, I'll pay. They write a check, there's value. Correct. You repeat that, that's a business. Yeah. So, so yeah. to me, that's where it gets real. So how, how are you guys doing in that, that, that regard? Mike said, service is not a big part of the business. I mean, he said we're going to talk about the business, but yeah. Cloudera makes good product revenue, right? I mean, you guys sell product and you have services. Yes, we do. We're a software yeah. company. Yeah, but it's not just all, <laughs> not just not all consulting. No, 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 not, not at all. I mean, we have a hybrid business model, right? We're, we're yeah. very open about that. Um, people can disagree, but we have, and, and by the way, make no mistake about it, when it comes to an open source core, we have the core of our solution is apples to apples equivalent with anyone else who says 100% open source. It's just that around that, we yeah. believe that there is additional opportunity to have software that, that we need to control the roadmap on for some period of time, and that's Mike, where we get a lot of value. Michael, I want to ask you about the product side on, on EMC. So what are the top requests that the customers have with Cloudera and Isilon? It's, I'm assuming it's just Isilon Group, right? Not other parts of EMC, or is that is it just Isilon you guys are talking we'll about? We'll talk about Isilon Just today. Isilon, okay, yeah, so talk about Isilon. So Isilon's out, they've got a lot of huge install base. What are the key features that they're looking for? What are, what are the top, top three? Um, I, I'd say that, I mean, primarily, what they're trying to get out of an Isilon installation is they're trying to make it more valuable. And the way you make it more valuable is you're able to do more stuff with it. You've already made that, that sunk cost investment in what's going to be stored there. And so the, the thing that really drives customers to reach out to us and what's causing this partnership to be close is that we add a lot of capability on top of just the deep storage that Isilon provides. So what product are you guys tying in that's synergistic with the relationship? Because it makes a lot of sense. I got the big iron storage, now I want to pull it into some sort of active layer. Impala, is it Impala? What, what's the, what's the, what are the products that are tying in with this uh, EMC relationship? It's the, it's the CDH suite, I okay. mean across the board. It, it's HBase, High. It's all Cloudera, it's so HDFS. like customers say, hey, I love Cloudera, but I got to make it work with Isilon. Is that the number one kind of thing mm -hmm. that you get? 
uh, kind of thing. Yeah, it, it may start the other direction. I have I have Isilon. I, I really want to do the, these new use cases. That's how I justify okay. uh, my position within the, the business enterprise. Is by so you're getting pulled value. into EMC business. Oh yeah, absolutely. More absolutely. than bumping think, into them. I think it's both well, ways. In fact, what's really interesting is to watch when we have a customer that's running Cloudera on one part of their business, mm -hmm. and they happen to be running Isilon and you know generally in their core part of their business, right? So. They've already made the decision that they want to go with Cloudera as the distribution, and now they have just more data that they can fairly easily, right? I won't say you just yeah. wave your hands, but but you can very easily take whole new quantities of data and run the same kinds of workloads in the Isilon environment that you're already running in your Cloudera cluster elsewhere. That's a very common motion that our teams are engaging in the field and, and awesome. working together on. Well, I think it's great that you guys work with Cloudera. It's, 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 uh, it shows a level of maturity across the industry. EMC, Cloudera, you know, rising up two great brands. Obviously, Cloudera is now, how many employees now? Like 3,000, 4,000, 50,000? What's the number? <laughs> I think we're closing in on 1,000 would be the so it's, it's, and, But it's still, I mean, not 17 when the it's, cube was there. That's more um, than 17. It's a big company, <laughs> you know, so. Do, do you guys see yourselves I mean, if you've got 70% repeatability in the apps now. And 30, solution. In the solutions. That's my where my question's going. Do you see yourselves getting to the point where you're packaging mostly repeatable apps, or do you offload those to partners, or what happens to that IP and, and the orientation of the company? So, so we're actually not even trying to be the solution provider, right? We happen to have all the expertise to do this. So this is just a, it's, it's a, um, it's a way to make the professional services organization more effective. Our, more precisely today. put, our global systems integrator partners are the folks that are working with us yeah. to take what we've done because, frankly, we, to this point, we still have more implementation experience across more industries. Than okay. really than any other company, right? So we're, we have all the assets, but we don't aspire to be an application company. That was my question. So what we're okay. doing is working You're enabling with our partners. Applications. Yeah, because look, our partners have much deeper industry expertise yeah, yeah. than we do. Just because we solved the same problem using Hadoop multiple times in financial yeah. services, doesn't make us financial services experts the way a global SI is. Will we'll a work global with them. SI be an application provider or a solution? provider that works with a packaged application vendor? We've always believed that the SI channel will be the first place where these solutions emerge. And whether those solutions get taken all the way to what I defined as a yeah, packaged we got, we application. Gotta, we, gotta, we gotta get break, we're getting the hook here. But I think oh. what I'm just to end on that note is that solution providers, some, I mean, SIs can sometimes have their own cloud. So yeah, I mean, you're seeing some vertical integration at the top of the solution stack. Yeah, you guys are enabling that though, right? That's the goal. But the package package apps will be a distinct class of vendor. Yeah, I think so. And there's a lot of folks that are already yeah. what they're much closer to packaged applications here, right? And our goal yeah, is we want them to build it on Cloudera. Tool, tools, packaged tools. Mm -hmm. But you're also seeing some packaged applications as well, right? So okay. Loosely pre-built analytics for a particular business problem okay. in an industry. Okay. We're going to take this offline because we, we're going to talk about some other other things off camera. But uh, great to have Cloudera on the cube representing their solutions and their partnership with EMC, Isilon. We'll be right back with more action here in Silicon Valley after this short break. <laughs>